for the Rocky Hill Police Department. Today you're going to hear remarks from the Chief of Police, Chris Watts, Mayor John Geddes, and then the President of the Rocky Hill Branch of the NAACP, Dr. Norma Gray. At this time, Chief Watts. I appreciate uh, each one of you coming out today. Uh, thank you very much. So let me start out by saying I am Chief Watts. Um, and we're here today to talk to address the arrest of Ricky and Travis Price and the concerns regarding the amount of force used during the interaction with police. I want you to know that the incident has been under review since yesterday when it occurred. However, conducting an accurate and thorough review takes time and it is not something that allows for premature information to be released. This information, the information that we know that can be released um, is our violent crime unit was working with Homeland Security Investigations yesterday conduct, conducting surveillance on known repeat offenders. One of those offenders was Ricky Price and he was located yesterday during a traffic stop. He was stopped for an illegal turn and changing lanes unlawfully. Price was pulled over and he was stopped at a gas station at Willowbrook Avenue. Price was the only occupant in the vehicle at the time of the stop. Officers utilized K-9 to conduct a narcotic sniff on the vehicle and after alerting, a search of the vehicle was conducted. Officers did locate two bags of marijuana and a handgun in the back seat and placed Ricky into handcuffs. Ricky was being searched when his brother Travis arrived at the gas station. Travis walked over to the officers and tried to grab items from his brother. Numerous times, Travis was told that he needed to get back and he refused. Officers approached Travis and he used his body to make contact with officers when they were trying to move him back. One officer then pushed Travis away as he was still trying to move toward Ricky. Travis used his hand to push the officer and the officer pushed Travis back to a large propane tank telling him he was under arrest. This is about the time that the videos circulating on social media began. During the, in the interaction with Travis, other officers have been asked by Ricky if they would remove jewelry so he could hand it over to someone else at the gas station. Ricky was in handcuffs, and in order to remove the items on his wrist, per his request, officers remove the handcuffs. Travis was taken Travis at the time was taken to the ground by officers and handcuffed. Ricky at the time, no longer handcuffed, began pushing away from officers to flee and threw several punches in which one punch hit an officer in the face. The canine, which was back in the patrol vehicle, was removed due to an active fight with a suspect. The canine was held back and never bit anyone. Also, a taser was never used during this incident. Officer struggled with Ricky, eventually tackling him to the ground. One officer was near his head and shoulders, while two other officers were near the lower part of his body. One of the Rock Hill officers punched Ricky several times in the upper leg as a pressure point pain compliance technique. Officers are trained to target the common peroneal nerve just above the knee and using this technique. There was no effect from these punches and these are visible on the video. Officers were able to handcuff, officers were able to, I'm sorry, uh, officers then threw one, the officer threw one punch hitting Ricky in the nose. This resulted in the blood seen in the video and at that time, officers were able to handcuff Ricky. Officers did provide treatment to Ricky, cleaned his face, called EMS. Ricky was taken by a patrol car to meet EMS at the Rock Hill Law Center. 
Ricky was transported to PMC, where he was treated and released into police custody. Both Ricky and Travis were taken to the Moss Justice Center. This was somewhat different than normal procedure, but to show impartiality and to ensure no rumors of ill treatment, that was why the decision was made to transport him there. After the arrest, we began to review the use of force. We are still co conducting our review. And in keeping with public trust and transparency, we have asked SLED to conduct an independent investigation into the incident. Two Rock Hill officers have been placed on administrative leave. We have met with local and state leaders and will continue to do so as we move forward. Rock Hill Police Department recognizes the pain and frustration our community feels over this incident. We want the public to know that their First Amendment rights to assemble will be protected. Rock Hill Police Department does have an obligation to protect the community, the property, and the people protesting and the officers. Peaceful assemblies will always be welcome. A couple of points to note uh, right before I came here. As I said, SLED has been called in. Uh, we have two investigators from SLED already at the police department beginning uh, their review. Um, I will have the mayor and Dr. Gray, which I met with both of them earlier today uh, to discuss this issue. Uh, mayor? Thank you, Chief, and good evening. Thank you all for coming out here to make sure that we can be as transparent as need be. Good afternoon. I want to thank you for being here and for the time that people have peacefully come together to work towards solutions for the betterment of our community. Although we are in the early days of understanding all the facts and situation of what happened yesterday, I trust that Chief Watts, the Rock Hill Police Department, York County Sheriff's Office, and the South Carolina Law Enforcement Division will work to fully investigate the incident and take appropriate action in a transparent and open way. Over the last 24 hours, we have heard the voices of many people, read your messages, and seen the passion for both our police officers and those they serve. I applaud the ongoing efforts of local community leaders, such as Dr. Gray and Reverend C.T. Kirk, who have and continue to participate in open dialogue with the police department to better understand the circumstances surrounding policing in our community. I also place full confidence in Chief Watts, his department, and other law enforcement agencies to protect and serve the people of this community. As for myself, both as a mayor and as a person of faith, I must trust in what I can't see and what isn't always clear. Having faith means more than just a profession of words. Having faith means trusting the community to do as we always have, come together, work through the tough situations, and give each other some space so that we can all be heard. We are all imperfect people, but we want the same things for our families, both for today's families and those to come. I ask in the coming days and weeks that we all remain calm, peaceful, and open to the words and hearts of others. There is more that unites us than divides us. We will work through this, law enforcement and the community together because that is what the Lord has called us to do but more importantly today that is what we do in this community we are good people we work together and we get to the right solutions for the right problems with that I'll call Dr. Gray to the stand please thank you mayor so um, I've been before the uh, the public several times since the incident took place yesterday afternoon. Um, what I bring before you today is uh, new information. Um, we've been boots on the ground uh, working with the Rock Hill Police Department. Um, we've had opportunity today to discuss with Chief Watts our concerns and many of our concerns have been addressed. Let me just say to you all, I echo the words of our mayor. This is a very, very tough situation for the city of Rock Hill. Uh, after having the opportunity to look at some of the video footage um, that was ascertained at the, at the scene, um, there's no way that we can make a determination uh, just based on that. Um, it was tough to look at the raw footage um, that was shown on Facebook 
and even more so convoluted are the video footage of the body cam. It is going to definitely take some days, weeks, if not even months, very much hours. There was so much scuffling and so much um, contortions off camera that was not seen, let me repeat, it is not seen on the Facebook footage. That Facebook footage is faced away from what happened to um, the, the, I can't remember his name, Ricky. What was happening to Ricky that caused them to bring him to ground was not captured and that is the footage that needs to be analyzed so that the public can be aware of what caused that violent sc scuttle. It is difficult to watch that Facebook footage. Anyone in their right mind can see that is difficult for us to watch. So I am asking and appealing to the community of Rock Hill to give us time. You all know me from yesterday. I have been nonstop giving you answers and it's going to take time for us to investigate, to comb through. SLED is here. Our local officials, our state officials have called for SLED and they are here. Allow them to do the investigation. Allow the Rock Hill NAACP to do what we've been doing, working hand in hand with Chief Watts for seven years. We called for transparency and we've been given transparency. Allow us to be transparent with you as we are given that information. And so again, we're asking for calm as you protest. Use your civil rights, but do it in calm. The officers that are called to serve and protect are not the officers that were out on the scene on yesterday. We're asking you to, to protect them. Black lives matter, all lives matter. These officers need to go home to their families, unbruised, unharmed. There are incidents, there are, there are activities happening throughout the city of Rock Hill this weekend. Graduations just are wrapping up. There are, there are activities throughout Rock Hill. We want to make sure everyone gets home safely. So I'm asking you, I am appealing to you, Rock Hill citizens, let's protest peacefully and let's allow the process that we fight for, that we vote for, to work for all Rock Hill. Thank you. I would like to add this and then I'll open it up to questions. Um, this incident happened yesterday afternoon. I was out of town and was supposed to be out of town until Saturday. Uh, I got a flight and flew out, flew out early this morning. Uh, I have not had the opportunity to read through all the statements and all the evidence that we have. The other thing that we're trying to work through as of last night, we had some peaceful protests, and then later on in the night, up until the early morning, we have some people that were not peacefully protesting, which takes a large amount of our resources. We're not a huge department. Um, and then tonight, we have some information that we'll have some more protests and possibility of some more possible uh, unlawful behavior so again, we're having to put most of our staff on alert and on call, which hinders us from the internal side of looking through it. But I wanna assure everyone that this is a concern. We wanna to get to the right answer and how to proceed. Again, that's why we called SLED. And again, thank you very much uh, for both of you, but that's what we're asking. If you want to protest peacefully and correctly, we welcome that and we'll work with you. But we're asking for calm and the people that are out there for the right reason. Please help us with the people that are coming out for the wrong reason. Um, I'll open it up for questions. And Chief, regarding, just regarding state law, would you support the release of the full body cam video that you received today if it would help aid in the campaign? Not today. I'll tell you why. First of all, uh, I sat down today with Dr. Norma Gray and the mayor, and we went through the video. A couple things that in our policy for body-worn camera, 
One, we want to make sure that we have gotten all the witnesses that we know have seen it. Because sometimes when we get witnesses or people turn out to be witnesses and they just saw the video. That's the first thing we try to make sure we have. The second is to make sure that the family's okay. I have not been able to speak with the family. We always ask for permission there and let them view the video before the public. After that, that will obviously be considered and we can do that, but we need to go through that procedure first. So, um, that answer your question? Mm -hmm. okay. Would you go into a little bit more detail about the compliance method that was used, why it was used and what it's for? So, at that particular time, what an officer was using was a pain compliance on the common peroneal nerve. It's just on the outside of the leg above the knee. He, you can see in the Facebook posting or video that there was a couple, two punches, maybe three on the leg um, to try to get pain compliance where he would stop and settle down. At that point, he had grabbed a hold to one of the officer's shirt he was not, that did not work, and then he reached around and then uh, punched uh, Mr. Price, uh, punched him in the nose. At that point, everything stopped. There were no more uh, punches or anything, and at that point, we have him uh, in custody. So that's the part. It was a active resisting. It was not something that happened after the person was handcuffed. That's why we must look through all the evidence and all the statements to find out um, the reason and uh, for that. What is the urgency to finish the investigation as quickly as possible? Um, the quicker, the better for us. That's why we called SLED today. I talked with Chief Keel, and he had two agents up here today, which is very fast. They're busy also, but he saw the importance of this. Uh, we see the importance along with our, our leaders and uh, so he complied and got two people up here quickly. So I'm expecting um, that we could get through this quickly and I'm hoping that um, we do not have to expend a lot of resources dealing with unlawful behavior uh, after dark. This was our operation. Um, as everybody knows, violent crime have, has been increasing, and we work with different federal partners. This happened to be Homeland Security at this time. And again, we were focused on known repeat offenders, again, in support of our, um, our initiatives trying to reduce violent crime. Yes, we look for all of that. And there's many different, there's not one said if a person does this, you do this. Um, it's, as Dr. Norman or Dr. Gray said, um, it is a, a violent incident like that when someone's resisting is not pretty, it's ugly. There's no way to make it look good. So we have to make sure what was the intent, what was why was the officer, what he was thinking at that time, why he needed to use that particular technique. And that's what we're trying to work through. Do you breathe trouble when you watch the video? Sure, it doesn't look good. And, um, but we still have to look at the facts. But no, it does not look good. Um, I don't think anybody, any police officer would look at it and say, that's a good look. So when you see it in video, um, and then some of the information is just incorrect. When you add the incorrect information with what you see on video, it makes it worse. So we have to deal with that. But I cannot give any false information out. I have to make sure before I speak that it is correct. There's many other people that can say what they want. And there's no repercussions. I don't have that luxury. I have to go with the facts and the evidence. And I think it's it's uh, we need to do that for everybody. For the officers involved and for uh, both the prices, both Ricky and Travis. The family attorney, the family's attorney said they went through the police policies that you guys had and saw nothing about punching somebody in the face being a policy. What are, what's your stance on that? 
again, in resisting that is called a hard hand uh, technique. Uh, there's nothing in the policy against it. We want to make sure was it used appropriately and why. Uh, I know we've talked before actually about this time last year about de-escalation and uh, you had said that only the force that is reasonably needed to take place to overcome what force is used. Did you feel like that was the case or is that what you guys have to? We're still looking into that to make sure. Thank y'all for coming. That's it. Any questions? Um, we know that the time is valuable and important and our time is too with what we're having to go through and what we're investigating right now. Um, so we're going to have to conclude the press conference at this time. Thank everyone for coming. We appreciate it.